Hi, I'm Dr. Boyce Watkins from Your Black World, and I'm here with my homegirl, my partner in crime, Miss Yvette Carnell. How you doing today, Yvette? Good. How about you? I'm doing really good. Really good. I might be doing better than Jay-Z. <laughs> but then again, it sounds like he got 99 problems. Uh, money ain't one, but he got 90, 99 other problems. But this, this image that has been circulating with him and his staff from Tidal, have you seen this picture? Yeah, I see. I've, I've seen. I've seen the picture. He has a. He has. It's a very, very, um, very white staff he has there. You, you, you know, considering what Jay Z has tried to do in terms of you know leveraging his blackness. <laughs> or man, you know, it, it's 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 so crazy. I saw that picture. Somebody sent it to me, and, and I didn't know somebody had sent it to you this morning too. And because it's on Breaking Brown, um, and and we wrote about it on Financial Juneteenth also, and and I was like, "Are you serious?" Like, like I looked at this. Did you stare? I mean, I stared at it for a while. I was like, "There's got to be a black person in here somewhere." Like, like, cause, cause I mean, the contrast, right? This man goes on stage and he's rapping. He's he's throwing out names like Freddie Gray, Trayvon Martin, Mike Brown, all of that. I don't think he mentioned Eric Garner, but he was literally digging deep in the in the racial pool to basically say he's a victim of discrimination and you your whole staff i mean not a black person in the picture except him and beyonce i mean yeah i mean, I mean what, it's what like you what, what i mean it's like it's like you said jay-z got 99 problems and black employees ain't one i mean right. he he the, the thing that really the thing that bothers me about it is is that this is what you see a lot of times from the black elite right once they get a million dollars, you know, when when something goes down, they're just like, oh, they're just trying to prosecute a black man and look what they're doing to a black man. But then you turn around and you leverage that, right? We come to your defense because we're like, leave that black man alone. You know, don't bother him. Don't bother that black woman, you know, because conspicuously, and I'm not saying Oprah did anything wrong, but I remember, you know, before the release of her movie as the run-up, we were talking about her being discriminated against with handbags, you know, somewhere, wherever she was in Europe, getting discriminated against. And so every time it's like when they have something to promote, they leverage their blackness. They talk about slavery and discrimination. And all of a sudden, remember last week, we were talking about Jay-Z supposedly gave a bunch of money to bail out Baltimore rioters. It's very conspicuous to me that all of this stuff comes out as he's trying to sell this, which is really a BS overpriced product that, the, you know, the market's already Spotify, Pandora already got that stuff. And you're just trying to get some more money for artists. Well, that's not my problem, you know, and you're trying to leverage black people and our black capital. So you got to black people. Y'all got to be there for me. These white people ain't taking up for us. And you don't have one black employee in that picture. You can find one qualified black person to work as an engineer, developer or anything. And you want to talk to me about discrimination? Are you serious? Wow. You know, I, I would imagine that if, if you want to really have a conversation about discrimination, it sounds like he needs to start with his own organization. I mean, if, if you as Jay-Z, a man with almost a billion dollars in the bank, or you're worth almost a billion dollars, if you are feeling the pain of racism, the way you describe it in your freestyle rap, imagine the pain of that, of that, that black techie who's trying to get a job at title, who admires you so much he just wants to work next to you. And every time he tries to get to you, you're, he can't get close to you because you're surrounded by white people. I mean, I mean, for real, you know, and, and that's that's what happens with a lot of folks. I mean, you know, I can even tell you that when I've dealt with celebrity types in the work that I do, um, there are some celebrities where, you know, it's like we can't get to them because they got a circle of white folks that are all eating off of the plate, you know, and, yeah. and protecting their client, keeping them away from black people. And so we can't even have a conversation, you know, and so it, it's crazy to me. I mean, you can't come out here talking about you're a victim of discrimination and, and, and you're going through your struggle when when you care you seem to care almost nothing about the struggles of the masses of people who support you and you who you expect to have your back. You know, and, and so so I and the funny thing is Yvette, I did not you know, I actually did a little segment on uh, for Vlad T V about Jay Z's thing just recently. And I went real hard on Jay Z about trying to do this title thing. I analyzed the data, looked at the numbers, and I got a sense that it could actually work if it's done a certain way. Um, and the, the, the financial dynamics of it all. I don't blame Jay-Z for trying to do this title thing, but I agree with you. You know, this issue that he's having with, with YouTube and Spotify and all that, those are those are wealthy Negro corporate problems. You know, you're mad because you're only going to get $30 million when you think you should have got $80 million. Most people ain't trying to connect to that and relate to that. And, and this picture does nothing to help this cause. Uh, I want to ask you this question. Um, you've had a lot of people 
uh, say, of course, you're going to have people that defend no matter what. They defend the black elite no matter what. They say whether it's Obama, Oprah, Jay-Z, they have these heroes that they worship. Um, and some people have said, well, look, Jay-Z just bought the company. Uh, so it, Title already had a staff. Um, he didn't have enough time to make the changes he wanted to make. So you guys are, you guys are making something out of nothing. What, what do you say to people who say that? I, I, I think, you know... Yeah. To make the changes you want to make, you have all the time in the world to do what you want to do. You don't have to. You don't have to go in right now. You don't have to post a pic right now. You know, you have all the time in the world to develop the team that you want to develop. My thing is, even if you want to keep that all white team, I'm fine with you doing that. If you just, if you want to just play the money game and hey, and hey, be like event, I'm just playing the money game. That's all I'm doing. I don't care about anything else. Okay, fine. I'm not a big fan of that, but fine. But don't try to leverage your blackness. Don't make a song about how you're being discriminated against and how we should come to your defense. And, you know, because because we have this sort of, or we're supposed to have this sort of racial allegiance. Just don't do that to me. If you're not going to be about black people in terms of hiring, then don't be about black people in terms of protecting yourself, in terms of ch trying to get us to put our, you know, political capital on the line for you. So just if he had left the song alone, I probably wouldn't even said anything about it. But when you get here and, and try to exchange and try to, tr he's really trying to extort people, really, by saying, look at, look at YouTube and look at all these companies not letting a black man in. He's really crying racism. And I don't like the word race card because it's like, you know, it's just it's just a BS term to me, you know, that just minimizes having a racial conversation. But he injected race into this title thing for no reason other than to have us have our have his back. And we shouldn't have his back unless he's having our back. So if you want to just play this as a straight businessman and you say you're just hiring the best employees or whatever, then leave us out of it. We don't need to we don't need to spend another ten or twenty dollars a month to make you richer. That's not our thing. We will decide whether or not we want Pandora, Spotify title or none of them based on how good they are not based on whether the fact that jay-z's at the top that means nothing to my bottom line well you know I, I think that we have to just understand that everything should be some type of quid pro quo look if you're trying to draw from the community uh be prepared to get back to that community when you're drawing from them if, you, if you're gonna go cry racism get us to support you because you're black well you need to support us because we're black uh, you can't tell me that there, that there are not black people qualified to go work in title. And for this picture to be circulated, and for us to really even think that this is normal, you got two Negroes surrounded by 40 white people, and nobody thinks that's strange. I mean, nobody thinks just, just how ridiculous that is in terms of, it, to me, to me, to me, it, to me it, it really, really signifies how the black elite are plucked away from black institutions and, and kind of brought into this la-la land where they're totally disconnected from the rest of the community. It happens in sports. I remember when we were at the University of Kentucky, uh, the black basketball players, we, we, we went to them because we needed their help with the protests because a black woman had almost been killed in a racial incident. And we, had, we asked for that legitimate help on a legitimate issue. And they had a voice that could have really elevated what we were trying to do and they we couldn't get to them because they were insulated you know and, and yeah. it, it just seems that, that you have these african americans that are money that are cash cows uh, for, for this corporate structure and they get sucked away insulated and they're kept away from black people and they're told repeatedly don't go around those niggas don't get involved with their stuff even um i remember that movie about the guy who played football in syracuse by ernie davis it was, i forgot what it was called but even in the movie ernie davis was upset about the civil rights movement he wanted to go and march and just all he wanted to do was march he didn't want to he didn't want to go beat anybody up or do anything illegal he just wanted to march and the coach said well, no, you, you should do your talking on the field. That's how you can you can achieve equal rights is by playing well on the football field. I mean, just th that's the kind of nonsense that, that we get fed. And, and the other thing about, you know, this thing about, you know, Jay-Z not having the ability to make staffing changes because he just bought the company, that's bullshit. And let me tell you why it's bullshit. It's bullshit because, number one, you just pay $56 million for that company. You're the boss. You own that sucker. You get to do whatever you want. You get to make whatever decisions you want. Uh, number two, Jay-Z made a lot of staffing changes after that press conference happened. When that press conference went down and the media started going after him, uh, you know, because, because he, you know, it was all about the artists and it wasn't about the public. It was by the artists, for the artists. People kind of made fun of that. Like, you're, mm -hmm. so you're kind of having this rebellion of the artists and you're expecting us to get behind that. People aren't doing that. But after that press conference occurred, Jay-Z, Rolling Stone Magazine writes about this. He made a large number of changes in that organization. I mean, he was hired and fired and moving people around and all that stuff. So you don't, don't tell me that he didn't have the time or the ability to make the changes that he thought were valuable. He made those changes. That did happen. So, you know, it, it's, it's funny, though, to me that how it seems that 
uh, you know, this situation really is a microcosm of so many broader issues. There's so many corporations where you'll go in an office and you'll see 35 white people and one black person. Like they've hired one black person the last 10 years and 35 white people. And everyone will act like that's normal. And when you ask them, well, why haven't you hired any black people? They will always have an excuse. There's always an explanation. We tried, we searched high and low, we searched the whole earth, and there were no black people available anywhere that could do this job. No qualified black people on the planet, right? Or, or oh, the company, uh, you know, titles in Sweden, and there are no black people in Sweden, and Jay-Z can't get any black people hired. I'm sorry, if, if put it this way, if you ever see Miss, if you ever see somebody like a Farrakhan, let's say, as an example, if you ever see him buy a company in Sweden, I guarantee you you're going to have some black employees in that company. He's going to make that happen because that's what's important to him. It's all about your priorities. What do you think? Well, no, I do think it's about priorities, but I mean, you have to be honest in terms of the black community has let the black elite get off the hook with this for years. You know, they can always come to us after they've done nothing, you know, or very little for us and say, you know, but, 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 you know, I'm still one of you and I need your protection now, you know, and that's what Jay-Z basically did when he came, when he came to us with that little, with that little pity party rap song, with this, you like, oh, I'm being discriminated against. Dude, you, 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 you're worth millions on top of millions. Who is discriminating against you? Who is, who is keeping you down? Like how, how do you expect a guy who hasn't had a job for two years, you know, because of the unemployment rate and he can't find a job in his industry? How do you affect a woman, you know, who, who, who doesn't have a job, who's struggling? How do you affect her to feel when you call yourself a victim? You know what I mean? Like it, it's, it's sort of an insult. And like I say, if you are a person who, even if title is all white, if, if I see you consistently, if you say, you know what, title is all white, it's, 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 in, a, it's in a white country, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to start a program for, for young black girls and young black boys to learn how to code. You know, we have black girls code. I can start, you can always have a bunch of more. I'm going to do a bunch of stuff to make sure, you know what I mean, that this is not the way it is in the future to increase the talent pool or whatever. But no, you don't want to throw your black dollars in that direction, but you want us to throw our black dollars towards you. No, black people have decided that we're going to judge these these products based on how good they are for us based on whether or not we like them we enjoy them and based on how much they cost we're not gonna we're not gonna judge them based on the fact that a black man just bought the company because the truth be told that may or may not and usually does not mean anything for us in the end so i think black people are you know from the responses that i've seen i'm very happy that black people are like listen you're not gonna just make a rap song and i'm just gonna run to your product and buy it because woo woo i love jay-z you know i can separate people people who like jay-z can separate the artist from the businessman and say, you know what, that may be fine for you, but that's not, that purchase is not in my best interest. It's not in my best financial interest. I'm not here to support the artist or whatever, you know, so you can buy another Lamborghini or another Ferrari. That's your business. I'm making the decision that's best for me as a consumer. Well, you know, and I agree with you. Uh, let me give you a little, uh, I, I grabbed a lyric online on Rap Genius, that, that other white-owned website that makes <laughs> hundreds of millions of dollars off of black culture. Um, uh, they, they literally, in case you all don't know, Rap Genius is a website that, that literally makes their money interpreting Negroes. They, they literally make their money by taking rap lyrics and translating them so white people can understand what rappers are talking about, or black people too. Anyway, um, uh, here, this is from his song, Diamond, Diamonds Are Forever, and Di- a Diamond Is Forever. And uh, this gives you a, a, some sort of sense of of maybe how Jay Z sees himself. Uh, I've always speculated that Jay Z and Lil Wayne to some extent too that they don't see them they see themselves as products of their environment more so than people that are able to shape their environments. I think that they still have something inside of them that maybe makes them feel like they're a victim, even though uh, every indicator says that they've. They, that they control their own destiny, uh, at least based on how much money they have. And, uh, and the lyrics are, are basically talking about where he's moved into a, a rich white neighborhood and, and how the white people react. And he says, um, into the penthouse building with spectacular views. They're like, uh, he's a menace. He can never be a tenant. I'm like, ooh, what's a young nigga to do? I bring the brothers to the bu- to the building, give a feeling that I don't give a fuck. We just chilling, watching chandelier ceilings high as fuck. Old lady, don't blow my high, especially if you don't know my life. Don't bring, make me bring Sharpton in it because I'm dark-skinned or a dude with the fro in the Rainbow Coalition. I'm a victim of a single-parent household, born in a mousehole, mousetrap. Niggas want to know how so, how Jay get about that. Yeah, I snatched purses. I persevered. I had work. And then he, he goes on and on and talks about how he had to get out of the hood and, and, and how in his journey. But you can hear kind of him talking in, in that same vein that he was speaking on stage about you know, these are my experiences as a rich black man 
and this is the racism I go through. So it almost tells me that maybe Jay-Z also just really doesn't understand exactly how racism works, structural racism works, uh, what he can do to help alleviate racism, and how he may be contributing to the problem. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I, I, what do you think? I mean, he, he had an album called Reasonable Doubt. Is there any way to give him some sort of reasonable doubt to say that maybe he just needs to be educated on some of this, or, or, or you think he just doesn't care? I, I think I'm far less charitable. I, I, think, I, think, I think Jay-Z decided a long time ago that cash is king. And that he's going to do whatever he can do to get that cash. And and if you are a black person and you have a black business, you know, you know that you know that you know how black people feel about black business. We really do want to support. We really do like to support black businesses if we can. We like to support black artists if we can. We really do have a sense of 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 a, of a collective community. And so. What you do if you're if you're out there and your business is floundering, you say, let me let me throw race out here. Let me see if I can get these people to kind of clamor for me based on the fact that I'm a black guy trying to do his thing. You know, I never forget, you know, I was I was helping a friend um, run for political office a long, long time ago and local office. And I remember this guy who was running for office. He was he was like, I'm going to win. And I, I put him aside. I was like, why are you going to win? Why you say that? And he was like, you know. I'm a black guy with a tie, you know, and this is a, this is a black community. He was like black women. They love to see a guy doing well or whatever. They really cheer for that. And I think, I think, I think that's part of it. I think we do cheer when we see, we see black people doing well, but what we have to understand is that we can cheer, but that doesn't mean we rally for them. That doesn't mean we give them our money unless there's going to be some sort of exchange. But I think Jay-Z is just like, you know, cash is king. And if I can use black people to kind of keep my business afloat right now while it's doing kind of bad and get me some, you know, get me some better press, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do whatever it takes to keep my business out there. Well, you know, I, I don't, I don't disagree with you. I mean, I think that, I think that the, the common denominator that you you're going to is that it has to be reciprocal. You know, you have to see some consistent effort where that celebrity really is putting it on the line for the black community. Um, you know, like for example, I know that if you if you had the money, if you had one tenth of the money Jay Z and Beyonce had, have, you you could make transformational changes all across the country with that kind of money. I mean, I can't imagine what Yvette Carnell would be like with a hundred million dollars in the bank. I mean, a problem, you, you could, a you real problem. Change, <laughs> you, you would probably change the lives of at least half a million people. I have no doubt about it. You know, and so when you see celebrities getting all this money and just sitting on it, and then sort of, you know, buying into this culture that says, look at me in my Lamborghini, look at me in my private jet, look at me in my private island, you know, if, if that's all they have to offer the world. Um, it's very disappointing. I mean, it's, it's really uh, sad to kind of see that. And I think for Jay-Z, um, I think he would have been okay if he had never done that little freestyle, trying to make it a racial thing. It's like, look, okay, you've abandoned your base, and you've gone out here into this in this, this corporate world. It's doggy dog. It's all about that money. Uh, that's the game you're playing. Like, don't, don't, you know, scream victory when you are on top, but cry like a bitch when things don't work out for you. You know, when, when, you're, when you don't end up on top. I mean, that's what I kind of saw. I kind of saw a little whine in there. I mean, you know, come on, man. Like, like I'm sorry. I know that they were discriminated. Maybe YouTube did discriminate against you, but YouTube's a 100-pound gorilla. And they're kicking you in your ass right now. So uh, if you can't win that battle, that's your problem because your community can't have your back because I don't really see any evidence that he's had the, 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 the back of the black community. And we've got our own problems. We've got bigger problems. The unemployment rate is always higher. It's usually doubled in the white community. You know, we've this is a, in terms of in terms of income inequality, Obama's administration is the worst. You know, we've gotten we we've fallen to the floor here. You know, the greatest the greatest the greatest redistribution of wealth from the bottom class to the wealthy class probably in the history of this country. So, you know, we have a lot of problems. We see the mass incarceration of black of, of, of black people right now we have our own problems nobody cares about whether or not you can sell this little shitty product like we don't have time to worry about that with everything we're going through black people are getting gunned down on the street you know every it seems like i mean from john crawford to to you look freddie gray to the to the, to the man who was shot in the back in south carolina we don't have time for you right exactly i agree i agree well, you know, I think it's a, I think it's a worthy conversation. I look forward to seeing how it all plays out. Um, and I want people to know we're not bashing Jay Z. We're not here to attack him, and, and we don't hate him. But we just look at it for what it is. We're saying just be objective, be honest. Let's look at let's look at the evidence. Let's look at the track record. I mean, if Beyonce and Jay Z put one tenth as much effort into supporting their community as they put into, you know, hobnobbing with the, with the rich and famous and making money and making music, um, you know, the whole the, the black community would be a changed place. 
Jay Z has the ability to, to reshape the world, but unfortunately, he's only focused on his own bottom line, and, and that's to the detriment of, of millions of people that he could have helped. So uh, that's that, that's it. Uh, I want to say thank you very much, Yvette. It was great talking to you. Great talking to you too, boys. Yes, and everybody, you can go read Yvette's article on this. You, you should you should read her article. She's much angrier about this than I am. Yvette, <laughs> she's, just, she, she's just mean. She's just mean. But go to breakingbrown.com and you can go check out what Yvette wrote about this. And, and I, I haven't read her piece on it, but I'm sure it's entertaining. And uh, until we meet again, please stay strong, be blessed, and be educated. We are gone. Peace.